We're in the classes page going over the typography section. Typography is one of the recommended global class systems inside Client First. The Client First Clonable comes with a lot of different text classes, and these classes can be used to further customize your type. We want to keep organized. We want to keep global when we're customizing our typography throughout the site because it's so important to keep a clean site with this. If you have hundreds of different classes that manage typography and you want to make changes to them, you have to go and update every single piece of text. The concept here is that pretty much every single piece of text can be managed with this global system. So if you want to make an update to color or size or weight, you can do that with this mentality. If you want more, please go and check out the learn more button. We have a full explanation of all of this. I'll be going over the basics here. Heading tags. What are heading tags? You need to be using them. Heading tags are the HTML tag that is applied to H1, 2, 3, and so on. You need to be using these to be properly indexed by Google. So it's a requirement. You don't want to just put a text element on the page and apply a heading class. We want to apply the HTML tag to the page and then apply a class on top. So let's look at that. Let's make sure we understand that concept before we move forward. I'm in here and we have our heading H2. So if I go inside the assets panel and I go and add a heading, I can go and change that to H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So let's say I have an H2. If I want to style my base H2, I would go in here to the HTML tag and go to all H2 headings. I want to style it like this. This is so, so important to make sure that you're styling the base tag for your headings. Excellent. Most H2s will follow this exact style set. However, not all the time. Sometimes you have an H1 or an H2 or an H3 that just doesn't follow the normal rules of your other H1s, 2s, and 3s. So we have heading classes. Let's go into our heading classes. Notice the heading prefix. We have heading X large, heading large, heading medium, heading small. And this is going to let us change the size of a heading text without adding some weird custom class to it. So let's go here and check this out. We have our H2 and you can see if I go and remove this, it turns to our normal H2. But in this case, I want my smaller H2. So I can apply my heading class to it and the heading class will then change the size. Notice how when I typed in heading here, we have a nice, neat and organized list of classes that I can use to customize that heading. And that is the concept of using prefixes inside Webflow, that our heading prefix will be used to return all of the classes we need for our heading. The text prefix takes it a step further. It makes it even more powerful. So we have our text prefix with a sub prefix right under it. Let's go over these. We have our text size large, medium, regular, small, tiny. This is something we can apply to text, usually more paragraph text, not our heading text to change the size. So maybe we have a paragraph that should be a little bit bigger or a paragraph that should be a little bit smaller. We can go and change that size with our text size, identifier size. Text style. Again, we see the text prefix with a style sub prefix. Text style link, text style quote, text style italics, all caps, no wrap, three lines, two lines. We, can go, we will go over these in a lot more detail when we review our clonables, our resources, our wireframes. They're all in here. Text weight, text weight extra bold, bold, semi-bold, normal, light. We can change the weight with our text 
weight, identifier. Text alignment, text align, text align, text align, text color is text color white, text color black, text color gray. You may be seeing a trend here where we have our text prefix with a sub prefix that helps classify it even further. One of the reasons we're doing this is for easy search inside Webflow. Let's look at this. We have a normal text block here. And look what happens when I type in text, just text. I get a nice list of all of the text classes inside this build. Text align center, I have my text sizes, my text styles, and so on. Of course, this is a pretty large list. And although it is really useful for us to pick from, we want to further specify what we're looking for for this class. So maybe I want to go text size. So by typing text size, styles panel will return everything that I have in the build for text size. And as I keep adding to this, maybe I wanted a text size XX large. That's going to show up with my text size prefix. Same thing here, maybe I do a text style and I can see all the styles available in here. So maybe I want italics, great. Or I want the text style, hmm, what do I need? Quote, we can do it. And if I want text align, it shows me all of my align options. If I want text weight spelled correctly, it will show, have, it will show me all of my text weight options. So that's the power of using this prefix and sub prefix content concept that we can search for our text classes, further specify which type of text class we're looking for, and then apply it to that element. And we have that mentality throughout our entire typography section. And if you set this up right for your build, in theory, you may never need to create a custom class for your text styling that you can create a system where all of your typography is globally managed with a typography global management system. Buttons and links. This one, of course, you have to keep these. Let's go and check this out here. I'm gonna go down to this section inside this build. We do need to make sure that our buttons have the same class name here. We do not want to have all different types of button names. We want our call to action to be our call to action, and that is a globally managed element. We can have a button secondary. This is another class that we can use to apply buttons. We want to try to not have custom classes for our buttons and call to actions. These are things that we want global, and that's why they're part of the typography section. That's a full overview of typography. This is how we are managing our styles globally, and this is going to help keep your website neat, organized, and professional.